So Microsoft revealed all the smoke, specs rather, about the Xbox Series X today in grand detail. Let's talk about it. Okay, as you can see here, still changing my look up here a little bit. I put the mic right here in front of me and give me sort of that commentary, podcasty type look for these type of videos. Uh, let me know what you guys think on that. I'm sort of evolving and working with all this stuff here. But let's jump right into talking about the Xbox Series X. Microsoft pretty much released all the information today. Uh, two videos I definitely recommend you watch is one from Austin Evans. They had He had a great exclusive on this that pretty much presented all the information, detailed and broke it down from physical components and whatnot. It's a great video to watch if you wanna really get the deep detailed specs. There's a great write up as well too. And I think they have a video as well too from Digital Foundry. They have some great information on here on it. They basically both got the exclusives on presenting the Xbox Series X the way they did here. And I really like the way Microsoft sort of did this here. Just giving us pretty much everything, just a, a dump of everything that we're gonna see here with it. Um, definitely I recommend checking out both of those videos, but in my video, I really want to focus on some of the core key specs, not all of them, but the core key specs that I think that are going to matter here when it comes to the Xbox when it's released and how long it's going to be able to last and keep up uh, going on down the line. Cause I really think they built a console to uh, come out the door swinging and last for a long time here. Let's first start off with the GPU as we bring the specs up here. Um, excuse me, the CPU as we bring the specs up here. We have an eight core uh, CPU custom Zen 2 processor here that's gonna work at 3.8 gigahertz when it's running at eight cores. And when you're running at uh, multi-threading, basically up to 16 cores, and when you're talking about for multi-threading, you're gonna be running at 3.6 gigahertz. So a 200 megahertz drop is not bad at all for that. Something you're probably not even gonna notice. And most likely that's for heat and stability is why they're dropping it down that 200 megahertz. But I'm just glad to see that that's there. So we know we're gonna get a powerful processor out of here. The GPU is a custom RDNA 2 GPU, 12 12 flops of power, 52 CU computing units, and it's gonna be running at 1.825 gigahertz. Amazingly powerful graphics card that's gonna be inside of this. It, that, that's something that should be able to run what we expect to run with this at 4K. It's gonna last for a while. I really think they're making a system that's gonna go about 10 years. I'm, I'm, I'm not even kidding here. I think they're trying to get to a 10 year cycle with this console and with these specs, it should come close to lasting up to that. We don't know what the future enhancements will, will be there, but it looks like it could hold up that long. We do have um, the processor is gonna be seven nanometers. Uh, for memory, this is interesting as well too. So we're gonna get 16 gigabytes of GDDR3 memory, but it's gonna be broken up. So 10 gigabytes of that is going to have the high bandwidth of about 560 gigabytes of speed. Uh, per second of speed and then the six gigabytes is going to be running at 336 gigabytes and that's going to be split up between about 3.5 gigabytes and that's going to be for sort of audio and other sort of things and then 2.5 gigabytes that's going to be running the operating system and that doesn't need that fast of ram to run your audio and then to run your uh, operating system inside the xbox which makes a lot of sense there you want the fast memory to be channeled for your gaming, which is what the focus of this console here is. Now for storage, pretty much knew it was going to be one terabyte of storage here with this. A little disappointed in that because games are coming in massive sizes. It's gonna be custom NVMe storage. It makes a lot of sense with that. Specifically looking for the speed and specs that they're looking for with this. Um, and it, there's going to be expansion available as well too. We'll get that in a second. But the IO throughput is going to be about 2.4 gigabytes raw and then 4.8 gigabytes compressed with custom hardware decompression blocks there inside of it. And as far as expansion, what I just mentioned before, one terabyte expansion card that you can add to it, which I'm assuming is another NVMe card that's that's going to fit in that little back slot there to look like an expansion slot, a little bit bigger than a compact flash slot right in the back of it. We can see that um, from some of the uh, media pictures, it looks like Seagate's gonna be making that SSD custom for them. So you're gonna be able to expand the storage here with it. And it's also going to take external storage, USB 3.2. So it's gonna be able to support that as well. So what I think in terms of the storage, I wanna get a little deeper into that. I think what we're seeing here is we're going to see that there's gonna be split between the type of games you're gonna to wanna to put storage on. Games that are optimized for the Xbox Series X, you're going to wanna to put on your one terabyte NVMe storage. You're gonna to wanna to put it on that custom storage because the game is going to be designed and made to run fast on that storage. 
So if you're getting a lot of Xbox One, Xbox Series X games, you're probably going to want to expand that 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 storage out. Get up to two terabytes because those games are going to be massive, especially if we're looking at 4K and some type of AK gaming coming along here with this. You're going to need a lot of data for that. So it makes a lot of sense to put your game on that particular type of storage. But I think for games that are maybe are not Xbox Series X enhanced, uh, games that are maybe made for the Xbox One X, games that are made for maybe just regular Xbox One, or even games made for the, uh, for the 360, they might not need that fast storage. So you might not want to put it on there, but you might want to put it on the USB 3.2 external storage, which I'm hoping is USB-C and it should be. That way you can play games off of there on a little bit slower storage, but you're still getting the games running at the speed they're intended to without using the fast and probably very expensive storage that's going to be inside the console there itself. So I kind of understand why they're doing that split from a cost perspective standpoint. So you're definitely going to have to kind of decide where you're storing your games, how you're going to store them and, and such. But also we're looking at, you know, cloud gaming with Project X Cloud and things like that. And if we move into that, there might not be a need to have too much storage on these consoles coming up down the line because you're going to be gaming in the cloud and it's just going to need enough storage to be able to cache what it's doing to give you the proper experience. Now, continuing down to the specs, we have a 4K UHD Blu-ray drive. I mean, makes sense. I mean, considering that's old tech and it's kind of funny to say that a Blu-ray drive is old tech these days, but that's just kind of old legacy tech. I can't even believe I'm saying the word legacy even with that to have on there and it's still going to be physical media available for the games the performance target is going to be 4k 60 uh 4k 60 fps with up to 120 fps per second they mentioned some 8k but i'm kind of glad they're sort of like this is our performance target we're going to try and get 4k 60 right for you up to 120 makes a lot of sense uh to get to that now, some of the other things they did show, there some other things that they did mention was ray tracing is going to be available in the Xbox Series X. They showed a picture of Minecraft before and then after with ray tracing, and you could just see the graphical improvements with that. That could be really good for a lot of different games out there that could use that. Minecraft could definitely use an update out there to get more graphical, to get a little pretty, a little nicer looking. I'm pretty sure Minecraft gamers are, would really appreciate that. Uh, there's also the quick resume, which they did show, which is pretty cool. We've had a similar sort of feature like this on the Xbox X, but now they've kind of enhanced it even more. So you're going to be able to kind of jump between games. You can pause at any point, stop at any point, jump to the next game, start that game up, stop that game, jump to the next game, start that game up. And you'll kind of see here in the demo, they kind of go through this sort of pace and you can go back and you're right back at the particular game that you first started with right at that point looks like you can do up to four games they didn't say a specific number from what i can see here with it or what i heard so far but that's pretty cool to have that quick resume to kind of jump in and bounce in and out as you would like to there's also another thing that they showed here is faster loading times they compared that with the xbox one x to the xbox series x it seemed like the loading started at about the 15 second point in this video and it seemed like within about 8 to 10 seconds the xbox uh, series x was already ready to go loaded get into your game and just go while the xbox one x was taking seems like significantly longer time i don't know if that was exaggerated a little bit but because it was a controlled demo but you can see the loading times are going to be much faster on the series x here than the original xbox one x so we are getting a real upgrade here these specs are Great. These are what you would expect in a, in a uh, mid to high end PC here. You're getting what you what you want to get in here. I can't imagine this is anything below 500 bucks when this launches. It's just going to have to be at that price point. And even then buying it at that price point, you're probably going to get something that's going to last you at least a minimum five years. I believe eight years is going to be a real good shot. I think they're going to aim for 10 years for this. Um, well, I want to be I'm saying that because I don't really see AK gaming coming fast enough or consistent enough and because we're not even a consistent 4k game just yet we're just at the cusp of that and i still think we're a couple years away before we get that locked down before we can even look at 8k gaming going forward and that makes sense here with xbox it allows them to have a dedicated console for development that people developers can rely on that they know that's going to be around it's going to give them the power that they need you can buy the system knowing that your games are going to look good regardless of what you're playing. And I really do think they're doing a good job here with these specs. I'm impressed with them. I think they're really good. Let me know what you think about the specs below. Do you think it's not high enough? 
Uh, do you want to see more or do you think it's just right? Let me know in the comments. Share your thoughts. This is Bowman here from BW1. Thanks for watching and always remember to live your tech world in high definition.